I don't want to slag him off, but he, towards the end, he did, <coughs> he voluntarily became like a scapegoat in the beginning. But as such, we all are, you know, like, I mean, I mean, things like that, you know, the, the you know, that's, that could be deemed as, like, you know, please give up. Uh, we're, we're holding a bottle, it's a juice bottle, it's addressed as if it's a prescription, yes? Yeah, because it looks like we. To, to Simon, okay. yes. Um, Forensic results, please give up horse riding. Uh, um, what's, the, what's the gap? Horse well, it's because I, I went horse riding yesterday, and I scared. But it's like, the thing is that everything between the band, we've always been sort of scapegoats for each other. And like, even Robert takes his fair share of stick. Um, and Lowell used to actually want, want it more. Um, and towards the end of him being in the group, I suppose it did get a bit vindictive but that's because well, you mean Lol enjoyed being the butter gang? Yeah, he loved it because because his because his contribution to the group was minimal to say the least. This is the way that he could get attention and like be part of the gang as it No, no, yeah. no. Not not even that. It, it was a way of like a child um, having a tantrum and he'd do things that would be particularly annoying. And <clears throat> because I've got a sort of short fuse anyway, he would provoke me. Um, and because he, like Robert can let things like that ride, it, 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 he can just, ignore things. Um, I most of the time can't. Um, so Lowell would sort of, you know, it's almost like a role reversal. It, in, in fact, Lowell was actually picking on me in a way because he, you know, I'd want to just be left alone. But when you get some someone come up to you and getting prodding and saying, fight me, fight me, uh, and I, and, and then Perry would come along and say, no, no, don't. Lo, just leave him alone. Um, and then he's, then Lo would say, well, he won't do anything because he's a wimp. And, and I'd look at Lo and think, he used to shit and I would punch his lights out. I mean, I'm not, that's not, I'm not mean that in a macho way or anything like that, but Lo, was physically unfit. He was drinking brandy for breakfast. Um, and all his problems with his then girlfriend and now wife um, spilled over in, in, into the group. And it was just too much. In, in an environment where you're in a residential studio or, or, or something like that, uh, you don't need other people's problems spilling over over into your own life because you've got enough to worry about yourself. And, you know, like, it sort of started, worst time it started was when we were doing Kiss Me at, mi mi uh, at Miravel. And, like, it got boring. It got... Um, I mean, the... the, the, the it was there where it happened, and we, we, we did do things like put balloons down his toilet, but as sort of jolly japes, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but then when we'd have to sit down for dinner and we'd be up at one end of the table and Lowell would be up the other end with his wife with a bottle of brandy just railing you're thinking, you know, Christ, I, you know, we, we do not need this. And so that's when I suppose that 
it, things did get vindictive because he, he was being um, negative to, to what we were doing there. I mean, he, he wouldn't come in the um, control room or anything like that or, or listen to what we'd done or anything like that. And he, he wouldn't be bothered to learn anything. He, and, and So what was his role then? I mean, just what, what was his role basically was that that um, because he'd known Robert since school, Robert felt an obligation towards him to keep him in employment. Uh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Because you know, Low Low had done some things that were. I mean. He was never a very good drummer, which, you know, which is why he went on to keyboards. But he was in a very lucky position that, I mean, Paul even sort of went to his house to like try and teach him key keyboard lines because Paul's really talented and, and can play anything. But Lowell just couldn't be bothered because he liked Paul, uh, Lowell liked the the fame side of it, not the creative side. And there's got to be a break for you know, like it can't be all drinking and 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 having a laugh. You know, there there is a side to it that that has got to be to buckle down and learn what to do. And okay, he wasn't he wasn't talented, but what we were saying was, you know, that even if you're not that talented, you can still be in the group as long as you learn the minimal bits that we give you to do. But he couldn't even be bothered to do that. And of course, in a closed environment, it, it sort of causes um, resentment. And it's, it's just weird behaviour because you said yourself that he was quite an intelligent bloke. No, I, no, no I, I, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't say. No, I wouldn't say he was a clever bloke. I, I would say he was very um, manipulate, manipulative, manipulative, mm. um, and he knew what he he had a good financial head on him. Mm. Um, and when I. We'd rejoin the group, which was about the same time that Boris joined. And Paul had been in for a bit again. Um, like, Boris, Paul and I were on wages. And, and it's horrible to talk about money because it, it shouldn't come down to that. But when, <coughs> like, I... Like when, like when we were on tour, I, I, I was, I had me get girlfriend then at the time in a flat, and I was getting about eighty pounds a week, and doing what I thought was really hard work, and Lowell would be in clubs, like, like flashing loads of money about, and and I remember. When we were on tour, we were in the club, and Lowell sort of said to me, um, well, I, I sort of tried to talk to him. I said, I'm really pleased to be back in the grit. I'm really pleased. He said, oh, oh, for the money? And I said, no. He said, well, yeah, but money's, money's got to do a lot with everything. And I thought, you wanker. Um, and that was a bone of contention from, from all, 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 almost afterwards, because... Was he always like that? Uh, he always had a, he always wanted to um, make sure that he was I don't know Lowell's always liked money um, you know like even if um, like this sort of side of, of how can I say it like instead of getting out a fiver to buy a packet of cigarettes to get out a fifty pound nut, you know, I 
20, 20 pound note was it? You know, it, it, because, because it sort of that was almost proving his his, his worth in, in in some way. Um, you know, but then again, he you know sometimes he he could be a really nice bloke, but he was very money or, orientated, and the only reason why he was in the group um, was because was because of the dosh, and. He, the times he did come in the control room, he'd be completely bollocked out of his head. And there's that old saying that babies and drunks tend to tell the truth. And he'd sort of come in and say, I think, I think what you're doing is a load of old shit. And you know, Having not contributed anything yeah. to that. Yeah. So it just got too much in in a closed environment um, when someone is there you know you know for four months or something like that it just gets too much and most of the time he wouldn't wouldn't know what time of the day it was he'd, he'd, he'd go to bed he'd get pissed up at breakfast go to bed at seven get up again at two get you know and have like huge brandies and go to bed again, what, but then come in and say that, you know, that what, that, that what we were doing was shit. And basically it just got, it just got all too much. And it, like, being, I, I just don't think, I don't think the cure, uh, uh, glamorous group, you know, like, we don't want to drive about in limos and shit like that. That's, you know, that's why we've got the black man and we all get in there t together. But Lowell loved all that side of it, you know, limos and bollocks like that. And it, it, it was just, it was just best that he went. And... Robert knew sort of Paul Boris's my dis discontentment with him and how it was causing friction within the group. And so Robert took the decision to send him a, a very nice letter, like saying, let's not build walls. And then, you know, this whole court case thing came about, which is <coughs> Sorry, actually, when, did, when did he send him this letter? When did he send him the letter? I think that was 1989. What, saying let's not build walls, meaning what, let's, let's, try, saying, let's try and work together? No, no, saying, basically saying that um, the group were touring next year, it would be best if if you if weren't, you if if, <laughs> if if you didn't, um, but let's not build walls. You know that meaning. You know, like not to. Oh, to, let's not say that for in the future you, you might not. Well, just to not stop talking, um, and there'd be resentment and stuff like that, because another tour with Low, it you know, someone would have killed him. I mean, I mean. Even before Perry was in the group, um, him, him, him and I used to hang, hang, hang around with each other. And the, and the states that we saw Low in were bloody ridiculous. Like, uh, there was one night that there was backstage and there was some people come back to get autographs and things. And Low was, walk, Low was walking around bollocks down his head. Um, Can you remember where this was backstage? Oh, where? no, it was America. Um, but I don't, I don't remember where. And he's walking around with a megaphone, shouting in people's ears to get attention. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is the first night. And we had to get him into the hotel. First night of the trip. Mm. We had to get him in 
to the hotel on a baggage trolley because he, he passed out. And then we all took turns to keep on going into his room to see if he'd like chucked up and sort of died and stuff like this. And so the, this, was, this must have been the tour before Kiss Me then? No. Didn't he get replaced on the Kiss Me tour? No, he, no, this... He played the Kiss Me tour. Yeah. Remember that. So that must have been the Kiss Me tour. Yeah, yeah. First date on the Kiss Me tour. On that yeah. case, we can work out where that was. Because right. that would be, that'll be recorded somewhere, wouldn't it? Right. The office, I'm sure, we'll know. So it was the first, the first American date on the yeah. Kiss Me tour, right. And, you know, it's just sort of... Um, it, it just got too much, really. Mm. You mentioned something about an incident in Dublin where you walked into the studio and kicked yeah. your microphone over or something. Yeah, oh no, that, that's, that's the, when we were actually doing um, the Kiss Me album, he, he, he decided to come in and um, he was bollocksed again. And he and Roger, the um, keyboard player at the time, and me were doing a track together. And he stumbled over the um, Lowell stumbled over the microphone, which ruined the track. That we, we we had to start again. And I I went in and to said, "What was that all about?" And he said, well, it don't matter because it was shit in any way. But the, 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 one, the one in Dublin was when we were doing the soundtrack for, for the open film of the Kispy tour. And again, I was spending a lot of time with Perry and um, Lowell was bollocks by about four in the afternoon and he just sort of came out and said um, fight me fight me you're a wimp which at that point Perry said lol you know just leave it because you know what's going to happen and he said yeah I know what's going to happen because he's a, he's a wimp so then Perry went back into the control room and Lowe and me had a fight. I see you predicted. Yeah. <laughs> God, it's sad. Just, just, you just kind of think that there's somebody who could have had it made in a sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, he could have had a nice life and has deliberately fucked it up. See, the thing is that what, 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 it's like when, when Perry joined the group, it made things so much easier because um, Robert Burris, Paul and I were doing some demos. We needed a keyboard player. Perry didn't have much experience in, in, in keyboards and like Perry, just locked himself in his room for two weeks and learned how to play the songs. You know, that's dedication. Lowell could have done that if he'd applied himself. And that's what, you know, Lowell would rather be out on the town with his sort of city business friends. And it just, it, it always sort of, grated against what I think the band stand for, which is we're just sort of normal, really. I, well, I hope. I mean, in this environment, I don't, I don't think we are. But then that's because we, like, we've been here for a long time. But ninety-nine percent of the time, we're just normal. You know, we don't have orgies. We don't take drugs and. We have done, but... Um, Isn't that what normal people do? <laughs> <laughs> <Orgies and things. laughs> you should hear around our village, believe me. <laughs> the stories we hear in our village. I thought life was yeah, racing in London, but when I moved to the country, my God, I started hearing <laughs> stories. <laughs> Still. 
That's, that's weird, actually. The, the village that I've moved to in, in the um, um, bus at the bus stop, there's kids take. I mean, it's, I mean, in this village, there's only a pub mm. and a school. It's got kids take drugs written just written on the bus stop. <laughs> The gun to life. Yeah. Good for you kids. <laughs> Come on, play in the fields and take drugs. <laughs> yeah. well, that's probably enough of lol for the moment. I do see we'll, we'll return to him at some point. Um, there was a curious tale that Robert couldn't remember, and I suspect that, uh, that there is no truth in it whatsoever, but I'll ask anyway. There's one report somewhere in the, in the cuttings that on the first date of the Kiss Me tour in America, the band had to be barricaded into their hotel on the first night and hired 12 sumo wrestlers as bodyguards. No, no, we did a TV show in France with sumo wrestlers. It's wonderful how these things get distorted, <laughs> isn't it? No, we, what happened, what the, I've forgotten the programme in France, but, um, we, we did it a few times and there was sumo wrestlers there which you sort of go into the corridor with each other and sort of the cure and 12 sumo wrestlers and, and, and we sort of said oh hello there and tried to shake hands and they sort of found it a bit bizarre but they weren't they would never had sumo wrestlers as bodyguards <laughs> be quite nice actually to um reproduce that little cutting because it's only a tiny thing from one of the one of the daily um, tabloids. Right. You know, just put that cutting and see what actually what actually happened was we were, and somehow the, the stories got crossed because there's an awful lot that gets printed that is just crap. I think that's it. It's always worth pointing it out. Um, neat. You you within the period of this book, I mean that we're starting in nineteen eighty seven, you got married within that period, didn't you? Yeah. When did you actually get married? <laughs> Fuck that. Can't is... remember. No. <laughs> Roughly? Uh, something like... No idea. Something I, like no idea. I, I, even I mean, the year? I, <laughs> I, I've, I've got a bollock in this year for not... Remembering the anniversary. Remembering it, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. This is why God invented diaries. <laughs> <laughs> It's, we'll, it's, we'll it's, 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 it's really weird, it. it's really weird actually, because the anniversary this year, um, my wife said the most classic thing, she said, you don't even, don't even know what, what, what day it is, do you? I thought, hang on, if I'm getting a bollock in, it's our anniversary, sorry, I haven't got anything yet. <laughs> I just quite managed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hung in there by the skin of yeah. your teeth. Yeah. I meant to. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't long before Robert got married, was it? it wasn't no, see, it was originally, originally we were going to have a double marriage because when we were in, um, when we were doing Kiss Me, mm. Mary said that we should all get married and she ripped up some paper and as confetti and threw it across me and she said you are going to aren't you I said yeah okay then and then I went and told my wife that we were going to get married and we were going to have a double wedding but it, there was too many too many complications because like Robert and Mary being Catholic and and us not um, so they, they wouldn't they wouldn't do it the church wouldn't go along yeah Churches do get in the way, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> right. But it just meant two two parties instead. Yeah. Well, I'm sure because I, I can't find any, anything in the cuttings explaining what you meant. Somebody must remember. Maybe you could between now and January, you could ask your missus. And <laughs> yeah, I will. When did we get married? <laughs> and write it down. Alright, <laughs> that, that, that would be really embarrassing, actually, wouldn't it? She'd hit you again. <laughs> we'll, we'll find she, a way. We'll find she's, a way. She's used to it. Where did you get married? Um, in a place called Nutfield. Where's that? Nut, N-U-T? Yeah. 
Um, that's in Surrey. Because we were living in a one-bedroom uh, one flat at the time. Um, in Nutfield. In Nutfield, yeah. And, but it, it was a really nice little village. And also, not you, that's not the village you're living in now. Though. No, no. no. Why, why were you living? Is, is, is it quite near where Robert is or something? Or? Well, no. It's see where where we come from. Like all all all, all around the Gatwick area, it's really strange. I was brought up in Hawley, um, which is one side of Gatwick. Robert grew up in Crawley, which is the other side of Gatwick. But as you go out, you get more and more little vi villages. Um, and I had to sort of spread out more and more. Um, I went to Nutfield first, then to a place called Crowborough, and then to where I'm now, to a place called With Withyham, which is near Tunbridge Wells. Um, but it was just sort of, just couldn't sort of stand living around Holt Holy anymore, because it's just sort of like, um, you know, you walk, you walk past the Chinese rest restaurant and there's sort of like, Loads of thugs like hanging about. I thought, oh, can't, can't handle this. Mm. And the problem with nice young lads. Yeah, probably. That, that look much like you would look if you were now their age, and you probably terrified people your age when you were that age. <laughs> yeah, but I sort of did did things. I did things when I was. I didn't sort of Just hang hang, around hang, hang outside. Chinese restaurants, but then again, saying that that, it, that isn't their fault. There's, there's nothing, nothing to do. But I, I sort of always like it's sort of a, a cliche to sort of go out into the country. But I, I've just always been into pubs and and um, like talking to old boys in pubs and things that I, mm. I really I really enjoy it. And there was, there was a cheap little flat going, you know, and. Um, Carol was still at work, and and we could afford to re rent it. And then actually, I moved some somewhere else after that. It's been quite yeah. It's a lot of that. So anyway, so you got married in the church there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Did, did the did the band come? Yeah. yeah. Robert Robert was best man. Yeah. And then you reciprocated when. Uh, yeah. Um, are there any stories to be told from the wedding? Did anything outrageous happen? Or? Um, Banana Rama came. Banana Rama came? Yeah. Why? Because I, I, was, I was friends with him at the time for some bizarre reason. I don't know why. Um, Bananas. And. I bet they all got guttered and threw up. No, no, they, <laughs> they, left, they left quite early. Yeah. All their reputation of drinking it is, is, isn't true, really. Everybody's reputation isn't true. So um, they, you, you just invited them and they turned up as me? Well, because at the time I was so, I used to go up to London and we'd met them at um, a TV show in Holland and sort of got, got on with them quite well. And I, I, I used to go up and go to the wet club with them sometimes, just... To wag? Mm, just... But, um, no, it was very... It was like a very dull wedding reception, because, like, like, just most most of my friends, there's one, one hobby is drinking, and so I sort of, like, like, like instead of having a lavish spread or anything, just sort of um, put some money behind the bar and let them get on with it and then it was sort of like, <laughs> you're me best mate, sort of stuff. Yeah. Like, just one second, I'll put on the big video. So did, did you, um, did you go anywhere for a honeymoon? Yeah. Is that why the honeymoon tour was called the honeymoon tour? Because Robert yeah. didn't go anywhere for a honeymoon either. No, that's that's why it was called so that. <laughs> yeah. And did you take the did you take the wife? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Did they enjoy it? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah.
was um, there was an incident in Madison Square Garden, I gather, where the doorman didn't actually recognise the band. I don't think it was there, but that's happened several times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've sort of gone out for a drink and um, tried to get backstage and sort of. <clears throat> I can't. I can't actually remember it happening at Mad Mad Madison Square Gardens, but it has happened several times. But um, there's one place in France, and we'll be saying. We are honestly the band, and it's about saying, we'll prove it. He's saying, well, we can't. He said, well, sing a song then. <laughs> we can't, we, we haven't got any guitars here. If you let us backstage, we'd... We'll play the guitar. Yeah. You want to uh, catch 22. <laughs> <laughs> um, Um, are there any sort of good road crew stories that ought to be told? I mean, because you've always got a number of people that, that have worked with you loyally and, and faithfully over a, over a period of years. I mean, are there any um, stories in the last few years? I can't think of any sort of road crew stories. It's, just, uh, it's but the whole thing about um, the road crew. It, it like we've sort of got people that we really like, like mm -hmm. Jez and everything, and, um... What's Jez's proper name? Jeremy. Jeremy what? Webb. Jeremy Webb, okay. Um, and there was an, another chap who's now working for Depeche Mode. So what is Jez's job then? Which Guitar tech. Guitar tech, right. Um, and general joke teller as well um, and like I don't know because we've like when, like when we first started we, we had to do most of it ourselves and everything and like we'd sort of do festivals and see like other um, groups road crew and they'd sort of be doing disgusting things you know like Backstage passes and, and like we've because we've been going for so long now we've met people that are genuinely nice like uh, uh, there's another like Tom Wilson who's now work he's now working for Depeche Mode who was just uh, um, he just turned up to a concert in Boston um, and he was so enthusiastic. He was he, he he was just there to sort of lo he was a local crew member who just got a job for a day to hump things, and we thought he was so brilliant that we said, "Oh, well, do you want to come on tour?" He said, "Yeah, okay, fine." And it's like like the whole thing with the road crew have, have been like that they've sort of been every one of the road crew. We, it sounds like really corny, but we actually really do get on with. Uh, but anecdotes about them, um, I can't really think of any because there well, there are a lot. But it was like Steve who was here is, was the, is the engineer. Engineer, yeah. And Bruno, Bruno. Bruno was that? Yeah, yeah. What's Bruno's? Job description. What's way. Bruno's job if description? I have to write him down as um, how long has he been with the band? He's, he's obviously he's ages, been around a long time. Ages. He yeah. he started off. He was he lived in the flat downstairs from Boris, um, and we needed. Where would that be? Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what's it? Not not in Hillgate. Yeah. Um, and we needed a drum. Rody and Boris sort of knew him, so he got him in. And as as the years have gone by, he sort of, um, he's you know, 
Bruno's job description there, is, I, I can't, you can't actually Doesn't have one, he's such, he's define it. He's just Bruno, yeah. Uh, I mean, he's, not, he's not road manager as no, such, or no. personal assistant. Or... I suppose that would be the closest thing to call him, yeah, but um, I th- it's really odd because it, it, it doesn't work like that. Like, um, I'd like to know what he does, but... <laughs> So when, when would he have been co-opted into it then? That was on the head and door tour. Wow, that's, that's awesome. he, cro- I mean, he crops up in videos all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he's clearly a well-loved member of the family. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> nuts. Um, who else was here tonight? The, uh... Nick. Nick, yeah. Well, right. What's Bruno's full name as well? Um, Brunning. Bruno Brunning. Well, see, this is really weird. No, no, he's, this is he, Frank Brunning. That, his real name's David Brunning, but mm. but that's not actually his real name. But <laughs> then he's he, but he calls himself Bruno Brunning, but we call him Billy Bongo. So, Fine. <laughs> or just Bongo. Well, I'm glad you made that clear. <laughs> <laughs> it's very confusing. The, the other chap, Nick. Um, who's also known as Metalhead um, he was Bruno's friend so he's sort of come in to assist as well and has he, has he been around for he's been around for about a year right. now so he's not quite yet long term family well, he is sort of, really, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's accepted. Yeah. I, I, I mean, are there people who sort of stay for quite a long time, but you never quite feel they're really part of it yet? There have been, but it's sort of got so... Um, see, it's a really weird thing to describe, because it's, it's almost elitist, but not in a smug way, that, that you don't actually realise... Like it's like when I phone up um, my wife and stuff like that, uh, and I say, "Oh, um, I got a Christmas card from Ch- Chorney Boy." She said, "Who's Chorney Boy?" And I said, "You remember Sean, who, en- who was assistant engineer on the last LP?" Like it isn't. Um, contrived, but it, th- just because we tend to lock ourselves away, um, people get their their names and ev- everything like that, and and I mean it's almost like a, a, a sort of little cult. Mm. Like that. So once they've been accepted, they've, they've got a name. And yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Sweet. <laughs> it's got worryingly sweet band really. <laughs> So the thing, the thing that I've always found actually is that the bands who, from the outside, appear the most awesome and impenetrable are almost invariably, once you get through that barrier, are almost invariably the sweetest band. Well, I don't, I wouldn't say we're sweet, but I mean, it's just that I think <coughs> around the time of pornography, I think we were probably an evil bunch of bastards. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, it, I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't say we're sweet, but it's just like, it's just as easy to sort of try and get along with, with people and than it is to not, just for, for wanting to, you know, be anti everything. I mean, we, there's, there's been a couple of times here, which, which we, which we call, um, one of us has one one too many to drink, and then we see each other the next day, and it's invariably me actually. Robert, my, Robert, Robert says, "Ah, oh, outburst night last night." Then I say, yeah, "I'm sorry, all right." Says what? An outburst. Out- oh, right. An outburst night. Yeah, you know where where you say, "I'm fucking fed up with everything." 
um, but they, they're just called out, outbursts, mm. and and then like ev- like ev- like everything's just gone. I mean, it, it in in an environment like this, it is very. Um, I think you have to be very close to not um, to not. <laughs> Because you, you get paranoid every day. You think, hang on. Like I, I might think, why is Teddy being so quiet? Have I done something wrong? Or why is Robert so quiet? Have, have I done something wrong? And then that sort of builds par- paranoia because you're, you're in that environment all the time. Yeah. yeah. But it's just, you know, it's just because. We have nothing to say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because you don't have to keep a conversation going. Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, talking about that kind of paranoia and worry, when Robert was working on the solo album that never happened, yeah, was that a worrying time for everybody else? I mean, did everybody no. else think this is this is Robert ditching us? No. 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 Why not? <laughs> because um, Robert's got a um, creative flow in him. That, that I think he's he wouldn't say it himself but I think he's a workaholic I think the, the reason why Robert can get to sleep at night is because he gets everything out of him um, he and I think Robert likes having a band around him um, because Robert, so, I mean, if if the band split up today, Robert, Teddy, and I would still write songs, and that was just sort of Robert doing his songs. And it, and if he brought it out as a solo LP, it wouldn't, you know, it it wouldn't wouldn't worry me at all because it would still be um, the cure would still exist. I mean. Um, earlier on this year, I, I left the band for two months um, just because I thought I'd, I'd had enough. And like, it's, it's always the you know, thing that Robert says in it, but this, this is the last two of the last LP. And it's always been a, a running joke, but I, I actually left for, for two months and I actually saw his side of us. Hang, hang on. It is quite good fun, you know, and I mean, basically, it, basically, it, it wouldn't if when he was doing that, it didn't matter because the band was still writing songs and still, still, still being the cure. It was just Robert doing something else. Extra thing. Yeah. But when you what, what was the two months from which you left the band? Um, May and June. So, in fact, think what was happening? The band was fairly quiet at that point. Well, we'd been demoing um, in East Sussex. I'd, I'd I'd been drinking too much and sort of weighing up. Um, Responsibilities towards the group and my kids, and just just one night, I just said, oh, you know, I've got to, you know, I've, I can't, I, like, I can't do both in, anymore. But then, like, like after two months of think, thinking about it, um, like Robert, so it's really weird. Like Robert would phone me up a lot. Not saying I'll come come back to the group, but he, I, I, I realised he, he, he was a friend because he was actually g- genuinely concerned how how I was, mm. and uh, actually I don't know 
how I got back in the group. It's just sort of like, <laughs> it was running. Suddenly there are no, 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 he, he, he rang you up. He, 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 he told me, he said he rang you up. He phoned up. about mixers and eventually yeah, he, he said, oh, fuck up he phoned, he phoned oh, up and, and said he'd, met, he'd been meeting um, different en- engineers and stuff. I said, oh, right. He said, well, which, which one do you think sounds best? I said, well, um, I'm not sure. He said, well, OK, when we're doing the demos, um, you can meet them all. And I said, oh, hang on. Hey, what? Like <laughs> and I was, like, so I just, I just said to him, um, "Shall Twin I come back?" Sort of what? thing. Sweet Twin Peaks or what? Twin Peaks, yeah, absolutely. But it, I mean, it, it is one of the most difficult things. I, I always think for bands, it must be that once you start having children, you think your priorities do shift. And you start, I imagine it's the same for a manager. <laughs> you, know, yeah. so you suddenly see a different set of perspectives, don't you? And you suddenly think, well, what is the most important thing? And how can I best uh, fulfil all the obligations at the same time? Yeah, it is. I, I suppose it is hard, but um, at the same time, it's better to sort of, I think it's better to try and do both than sort of sit sit around the house and say, hello, I'm here, dear, and I'm, I'm here for the kids and everything. Because else, there isn't anything. I mean, you know, I, I got offered a job as a, a roof tiler when, when, when I left, and I said, hold up, I'm scared of heights. I don't like get <laughs> I don't like getting up and, And um, I actually, you know, again, it sounds co- corny, but I, I, I genuinely do get on with Robert and Perry really a lot. My theory is that midlife crises actually comes younger for artists. <laughs> this could be, I, mean, I think it's just life crises non-stop. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, any kind of artistic job takes you away from and yeah. there's, lo- there's loads of jobs that aren't that take you away from people for long mm-hmm. times of time. You know, there's a lot of worse things. Long you distance be in. truck driver. Long distance truck driver. Yeah. Sailor. Um, was that a totally different subject? That um, was there an, an incident at the the Belgian and French border where? The, the bus was held up for an hour or something because the um, customs men wanted to get autographs, or was that made up by tabloids as well? Um, that was Mexico. Ah, <laughs> oh, the Belgian-French border in Mexico. <laughs> that Belgian-French border! <laughs> that was the, the, no, that was difficult, wasn't it? That it was the Mexico. Rio Grande on the, the Harker story. That was. Uh, Where did you cross the, the border? Well, it, when, like, when you have to go into Mexico, you have to get off the coach, then get a because American bus companies won't um, insure their buses to go into Mexico, etc. Um, and so they mean, you're meant to you meant to switch. Yeah, they were meant to switch to the cargo depot, you know, road depot, but the bus driver was an American, a Texan, and he just carried on, so lost this, the plot. Was this the or That was there's, there's only two or three times that well, you can Yeah, what is it? It's the the Toledo? Is it Toledo? I think it's Toledo. Yes, probably. On the Rio Grande. Yeah, there's only two or three border... They're like, and they are border towns. So what they that lot did, unfortunately, they came across on their bus and went, <laughs> went into the slipway, mm-hmm. went through the American customs point, and then realised they were now into entering to cross the river, mm-hmm. and they're in Mexican, mm-hmm. they're in no man's land really. Oh, but actually, saying that the the, the um, Bel- Belgian thing, I, I think that is that is true actually, because 
we had some videos on um, on the bus and they wanted to see them so they sort of made that's right it, that, 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 that is, that is true yeah yeah you mean they wanted to watch the videos yeah they sort well, of in case well, we, they were porn or something well we, 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 we were just sort of at the back watch, watch, watching videos and they sort of came on to just, just check the passports and just sort of sat down and then asked for autographs and things that's right. yeah, I remember that <laughs> and we're, we're sort of here. And sort of saying, well, yeah, thanks for the passport back. And they just sit, sit in there, and, and and like there was loads of beer about and everything, and they were sort of like looking, looking at, you know, everything. Why the hell the fuck can we get rid of them? But yeah, that that is true, actually. Yeah. So you were just stuck there with these guys sitting watching. Yeah. 